Hello, everybody. Hi, everyone. Today, our webinar focused on um, automated viscosity screening um, in high throughput mode with our VROC Admission 1 Plus. This will be presented by Dr. Krishna Choa. Please feel free if you have any questions to leave them in the um, questions part of GoToWebinar, and we will answer all of them at the end of the presentation. Thank you. Um, do you mind after I finish this on my on many help just the thoughts? Hi everybody. Uh, I'd like to check if um, if everyone can hear me and see my slides uh, shown here. Uh, you can leave it in the poll. Um, shown uh, below. Okay, um, looks like I have to share my screen. So let's, um, let's go ahead and share my my screen here so Um, yeah, uh, one moment, uh, we're going to, we're trying to, uh, share the screen here. Oh, here we go. Ah, perfect. All righty. Can you guys see the screen now? Perfect. Okay. So, so thank, thank you very, very much, guys, for attending this webinar on the high throughput um, automated viscosity screening with Initium One Plus. So this is uh, gives you the ability to run um, 96 samples in under 24 hours. So before going into uh, the high throughput screening mode. Um, that we have for Initium, I'd like to give a short review on the viscosity. Um, so how it is we obtain uh, the viscosity, uh, a little uh, couple of uh, uh, terms for those of you who may not be familiar. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide. So viscosity is this uh, resistance of the fluid to flowing. So for example, a, a highly viscous fluid has a higher resistance to flow than um, a less viscous one or an inviscid fluid. So the viscosity can be defined uh, once. So I'm plugging in my microphone here. I've been told there's some interference. Okay, perfect. I think that should sound better now. So the viscosity will be defined uh, as the shear stress experienced by, experienced by the fluid divided by the shear rate or the rate of deformation. So in this diagram here, you can see how the shear rate um, here, this diagram on the right, you can see how the shear rate is the velocity gradient uh, perpendicular to the direction the fluid is flowing. So another way you can think of this is these shear flows um, is that there are these you have these fluid elements these sheets that are moving um, adjacent to each other and are moving past each other at different velocities 
So at the microscopic nano level, the viscosity is going to be like a molecular friction uh, between your molecules, particles, or any other self-assembled structures. And this is going to be sensitive to what's happening um, at this level, your viscosity will be sensitive. And this is going to inform you on the nano and microstructure of these, um, of these uh, elements, these molecules. So now we move on to um, explaining how our technology works, uh, the VROC technology. So the VROC uh, stands for viscometer rheometer on a chip. And this is different from uh, rotational instruments or uh, capillary tubes, uh, gravity driven ones, um, because here you have a combination of uh, microfluidics and MEM sensors. So it consists of this rectangular channel, and which has the four pressure sensors uh, linearly aligned. And we control the flow rate going through this channel. And after that, we monitor the, while this is flowing, we monitor the pressure drop through with the sensors. Uh, so we can see um, here the pressure drop plotted with respect to sensor position. And now from this um, flow rate that we impose in the channel dimensions, we can get the shear rates. From this uh, pressure drop and the channel dimensions as well, we get the shear stress. Now combining these, we get the viscosity. And that's how the core of the technology is going to, is going to work. So. Now we move on to the next slide. So now VROC, I'm happy to announce that it includes an HTS, uh, high throughput screening viscosity feature. And this is uh, going to allow you for fast screening of a um, large collection of drug candidates or um, other uh, molecular uh, compounds. So this is a fast and accurate screening uh, that can be done for your candidates uh, and you can get a quick report generation and export to Excel. You also have the capability of full automation with the initium. So once you set your samples, you can walk away and uh, return after, you know, however many hours um, or minutes you need uh, so that you don't have to waste uh, time, you know, staying with the instrument. Uh, you have the capability for unlimited data with a small sample volume as low as 19 microliters. And this is under many shear rate and temperature conditions, you can do this. Uh, even with such small volumes, your accuracy is not going to be uh, compromised. So we have uh, less than uh, or equal to 2%. And uh, as well as your repeatability will be uh, less than uh, 2%. And even lower for um, uh, higher flow rates. You, you also have the option to recover your sample, so you don't need to use more of your precious sample uh, for further testing. So this will allow you to test uh, large libraries of myological molecules, which uh, will reduce the time needed to find um, your leads and exclude other other candidates. So here uh, I show how I'm going to show how to obtain viscosity results with this initium high throughput screening mode with the uh, volumes uh, as low as 19 microliters. Uh, I will be showing you this right now with a few slides, as well as with a webcam demo after, uh, after these slides. So sample preparation is uh, important for getting um, good results. So let's go ahead, go to that slide. So to ensure um, you have uh, the tools you need. Uh, our next software update is going to be compatible with the uh, high throughput mode, uh, and this will be available for you to use. So, also to ensure you have uh, your well prepared, you need the 96 volt plates from uh, supplied by BioRed. Uh, you must use a positive displacement pipette for loading your samples. So, I will show this later as well. You can also use a uh, uh, robotic liquid handler to pipe at uh, a minimum of 19 microliters. And um, if you have questions, uh, more about questions about robotic liquid handlers, um, you can contact us and we can refer you to uh, James Bond. Uh, he works with uh, a supplier of those uh, instruments. 
So after sealing uh, centrifuging your plate with your samples, you can simply load the preset recipe and use it for all of your samples. Also, the tray in the initium can be set to as low as 4C. So this will minimize your evaporation of your sample. And this is separate from the testing of your, um, of your um, compounds. So, so you can have a temperature, room temperature for the chip and low temperature for the tray at the same time. So here we show the 40 vial rack in this image, but you can simply remove this and change the configuration uh, and use the 96 volt plate. It's just a matter of um, just taking it out and placing the other one in. So uh, once you hit run, all the remaining steps will be fully automated. And so that's going to include loading, measurement, and cleaning. So here in the next slide, we have the viscosity of samples in a 96 volt plate. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and get to that. So each dot here, you can see, this is viscosity versus well number. <clears throat> so each dot is for each sample. And for each uh, dot here, it corresponds to um, only 19 microliters. So each sample is 19 microliters. All the measurements were completed within 24 hours. So this is fully automatically. And we can see, uh, show the nice repeatability that we got when running this sample, multiple uh, samples of this uh, bovine chemical globulin, um, relatively high concentration solution. So you can also, if you want, you can measure for multiple concentrations. Uh, you can measure for multiple molecules, multiple excipients, uh, temperatures, and other conditions. And if you're measuring with um, multiple shear rates and um, temperatures, you can do all of these uh, conditions with only one sample, which is 19 microliter volume. Uh, thanks to our retrieval feature, you can use that same volume without having to, um, you know, input another one. You can use that simple volume to run um, all these multiple conditions uh, for your measurements. So that's a really nice uh, uh, feature about uh, this uh, Initium One Plus, as well as the MBROC Two has that feature. So, so with HT mode, mode uh, high throughput mode. mode Let's go to the next slide. You can get an enormous amount of data and clarity uh, will make it easy uh, for you to analyze and reprocess the data. So that was a pun not intended. <laughs> clarity is a uh, data organization and analysis package that are uh, created by RioSense. And this uh, reprocessing is going to, um, it's based on the R squared criteria. Uh, with this uh, clarity packet uh, software, you can also analyze your data for uh, intrinsic viscosity studies and uh, injectability force. Um, you can even perform uh, other corrections uh, to your data for like non Newtonian solutions. <clears throat> so, when you're presenting your data with clarity, uh, it has a capability to create reports for you, as shown here um, on the left. You also have the option of exporting your analyzed data as other file types. Um, so that includes Excel, um, HTML, and there's like seven other file types that I've seen um, that you can export as. So <clears throat> here we come to the last slide before we go over the uh, webcam demo. So this is more of an uh, overview. We can, uh, we've seen how the Initial One Plus with HT mode allows for this um, ultra fast and repeatable screening for this large, large amount of candidates. candidates. And then you'll see later in the demo as well how we prepare this. So not only can you uh, early stage uh, screen your samples, but you can take a, a look at this data and look at it more deeply um, after that. So one of the things you can do is you can run a intrinsic viscosity analysis to characterize the size of your molecules, your particles, your aggregates. Also, you can uh, perform a wide shear rate uh, and temperature sweeps. And this will give you a viscosity fingerprint of all of your formulations, especially for your 
high concentration formulations, uh, which can uh, shear thin. So with this, you can uh, calculate the cluster size of your various uh, proteins by seeing the onset of shear thinning. <clears throat> and also knowing this non-Newtonian behavior will allow you to better well, estimate injection force, force if that's, that's what you're interested in. So, so when, when injecting, uh, uh, there will actually be a wider range of shear rates. And, and this is going to correspond to, to, to the, the, this plateau, plateau region and the shear thinning region if your sample is uh, shear thinning. So this is more likely for uh, higher viscosity maps. So that's why having this wider range of shear rates here is important for estimating the injectability force well. And this is what's beneficial here over other instruments because you can reach high shear rates um, that cannot be captured with other instruments. So you can take your analysis and estimate the injectability force in any syringe geometry and syringe friction forces. So that's a really nice thing. Uh, if you want to learn more about injectability force, intrinsic viscosity, cluster size analysis methods, uh, you can contact us and we can refer you to our large collection of app notes and webinars that discuss this. So this is a large collection we have of uh, free app notes and webinars. So now we proceed with the uh, webcam demo. Uh, we're going, I'm going to ask, uh, I have to switch over to another computer, so I will. Uh, we will try to do this as fast and and as seamlessly as possible. So let's. Um, I will we'll take uh, be as fast as possible. It's going to take more than a couple minutes. So I will be right back. Okay. Um, turn my screen. Application. I think I have to share. Um, let's go ahead and great. Um, can you guys see the initium uh, window here? Let's go ahead and Go ahead and do that. Webcam. 
Can you guys see my webcam as well as my uh, the Initium software screen? So it looks like only the software screen is showing. So I'm sharing my. All right, perfect. So sorry about that. Looks like we now have the webcam all set up and uh, all right, perfect. Webcam and the screen. So let's go ahead and uh, show you um, how you can run these um, the high throughput measurements. So great. Go ahead and move this over here. Okay. So I'd like to see the webcam. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. So for the measurements, we're gonna start uh, setting up here. So right now we have the 40 um, bio rack. Uh, placed on the Initium. So this is the Initium One Plus here you can see in the webcam, um, as well as uh, the auto sampler, which will automatically load all of your samples. So we have the true tray configurations. We have the one, the 40 vial rack, as well as the 96 volt plate. So we're, what we're going to do is simply switch this up, the 96 volt plate, because that's the one we want to use. <clears throat> And now what we are going to do is uh, going to show you how to prepare the samples. So let's go ahead and I'm going to get the positive displacement pipette. I'm going to set it to 19 microliters. Get a pipette tip. And now place this over here. So today I'm going to be using a standard sample. pipette out the sample. So what I like to do when pipetting is after I pipette up the first time, I like to go down a couple of times to remove any bubbles that may be in the tip. So once that's done, I touch up. And then here is the fire red plate that we use for loading all of the samples. So what we're going to do is I'm going to be uh, loading into, let's load into the first well. So then you point down to the middle and then Place the sample in, we touch off the tip by touching off at the wall, that's it. So this is what I would do for the 96 samples. I can do this, uh, this one was demonstration, but in reality I could do this um, fairly quickly at this point. So we can just place the sample here, touch off, and that's ready. So now once the samples are placed on your tray, you can go ahead and um, we're going to seal the plate. So that's to uh, prevent any evaporation of your of your samples. So for that, we're going to be using uh, this uh, film. So let's place the tray here so that I can take the film out. Adjust the camera a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the sticker. 
and then I'm going to carefully uh, place it on top. So let's go ahead and make sure I'm okay. So now once I place it on top, uh, we take the roller. So we found that it's uh, actually more beneficial to use the roller to keep the, the film level and straight on, on the top of the plate. So we can just roll it a few times. I like to go in this direction as well. And that should be it. So once you have that prepared, you would uh, place it in the centrifuge. Uh, so we have a plate fusion house and that would be for a minimum of at least uh, one minute at the max rate. Uh, so this one is not centrifuged, but I do have a plate here that we already centrifuged and loaded sample into. So here we're going to go ahead and uh, load the sample from here. So let's place that here onto the 96 watt plate. Let me adjust the camera so that you can see better. Perfect. So here uh, is the screen for the so um, running the measurements, the software screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the uh, recipe. So we have the preloaded recipes um, for running these measurements. So here we have this one. It's entitled HCS screen, and this should be uh, this recipe will come uh, pre-installed with the latest software version, the high throughput mode software version. So once I do that, it automatically loads the loading measurement and cleaning protocols for you. And then after that, we're going to uh, enter the sample name. So let's call it uh, sample one. And then let's state the location for picking up the sample. So for this one, I loaded the first two rows. Let's pick the, I'll pick this corner here. And you can add uh, multiple rows. Uh, so we like to run 96 samples here in house. So you can do that by uh, simply selecting all of these samples and clicking on plus. But in this case, we only want to run, um, uh, we're only going to run one, we can do two samples to show. Uh, so we can run that one and let's choose this one here. So now that we have that all set, uh, you're pretty much good to go. You can go to run. Uh, let's title this um, sample one. Sample one. Double click. Uh, we're going to keep temperature control on. Uh, we're going to select high throughput mode for this um, ultra fast uh, screening of the samples. Um, I'm going to leave the AI feature off for this point. Uh, but if you want to have additional analysis of your um, the onset of your viscosity curves, you can click on as well. So I'm going to click on. And one important thing to note is that when you're running the initium, uh, keep track of the use comes. So make sure they're not um, too high. In-house, we're constantly um, testing the use comes so that we know uh, we're constantly monitoring these for development, so we know these use, uh, these parts are still uh, sufficient. But if you see the use count is too high, you should uh, consider you should replace that part. So now you can see on the webcam the unit has started to initialize. And while it's running, uh, I can mention uh, a few things. So it already started going to the sample. You can see it picking up the sample already. So one thing uh, I like to mention is uh, you can see the three solvent bottles to the left here. So here we have the option uh, for the three solvent bottles uh, for your 96 uh, watt plate. So if you're running 96 samples, you're going to consume about um, seven to 800 milliliters um, of solvent for each of the bottles. So that's why we, we can, we supply those uh, one liter bottles. Uh, the solvents that I'm using are, the primary is the formulation buffer. The secondary is 
uh, water, DI water, and the enhancer is acetone for drying the path. So uh, the primary will have the formulation buffer as well as uh, aquate, so it's a mixture of both. Uh, if you want, we also have created a best practices for uh, running the instruments, so we can uh, supply that to you so that you can uh, seamlessly run these uh, your measurements. Another thing uh, I like to check for best practices is to make sure there's no after you know each 96 volt plate. Uh, you may it's possible you may have some salts from your sample uh, accumulated and uh, like near the ports. So a good practice is to um, take a lint-free wipe, and then you would wet this with a combination of your buffer, DA water, um, and IPA. And then you would then uh, use it to scrape off the test syringe plunger or the washboards if, uh, if needed. And then afterwards, you can use a dry air supply, canned air, to remove any, any other particles that still, may still be uh, hanging around. Uh, for the calibration of the auto sampler, um, that's, uh, those instructions are now well detailed in these best practices documents that uh, we, it will be supplied, this document will actually be supplied with the new software version. So by, if you want to see that document, you simply go to this help window. So it looks like the sample was already um, loaded. So the auto sampler arm is now being cleaned automatically. And then we can, uh, if we go here to this graph on the initium, we can now see the data has already started to be gathered. So this is the priming segment. That's where you have this spike uh, because that's when the sample first comes into the channel. So you initially have this spike from surface tension. And now we can see that it's uh, slowly priming into the, into the channel. So it's going at this very low rate. So this priming segment uh, will have a little bit more noise, and that's how it's designed. It's designed to be pumped at a low rate. The following segments are the ones that will give you the, the results, um, the ones that you will be more interested in, uh, the ones that you're going to be using for, the, uh, for your uh, screening and uh, reprocessing later with Clarity. Um, so another best practice is to make sure all of the components are well calibrated. So that's uh, that's going to be, you can see that in our user manual. We'll be updating the user manual as well. And you can see, you will be able to see there the, how exactly how to calibrate the positions. So now we can see we started getting this uh, beautiful data now. Uh, so the viscosity is around seven, between seven and eight. So it's a very nice uh, plateau. Uh, for this viscosity versus time graph. And we can see these bolded uh, data points uh, or the average data points. And um, that looks uh, really good. We can see here on the bottom right, uh, the viscosity plotted versus segment number. And you can see the, the error bar for the, for the first segment looks very good. Um, So this bar is actually corresponds to the min and max of these average points. So um, yeah, that looks really nice. And then here you have the real time pressure of the four sensors. So when your solution is running, uh, this linear drop characteristic of the flow is um, what you want to see. You can also choose to go to details here and see the real time uh, pressure of the four sensors at once. So you can see here how uniform these pressures are and uh, here the corresponding viscosity from that. Um, so I'm looking here at any other um, important things to mention. Um, so yeah, another thing you want to check with best practices is uh, make sure your waste bottle. So that would be the one under the initium. Uh, let's see if I can show it here. It should be the one, that one placed under the units. 
Uh, make sure that's not more than about a liter full, uh, especially if you're running 96 samples at once, because you're going to be, you, that's going to be taking in about two liters um, for all those samples, two liters of pretty much the cleaning solutions. Um, yeah, again, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's important to make sure the, your buffer, the cleaning solution for the primary one, uh, is compatible with your uh, solutions. So if you have one cleaning buffer that works for all of your solutions, uh, that's good. Just make sure that's the case. Um, also the diagnostics, make sure those are fine. So one um, nice thing about the Initium and MVROC2 is that you have these pre-diagnostics that are checking for any leaks or um, uh, clogs in your channel. And this was not possible before with uh, uh, MVROC1 or um, like MVROC1 instrument. So now you can see that, ensure that your chip and flow pads are clean and um, and I would say healthy, and so that you can ensure that your measurements will be um, will be good. So the trade temperature, I set it to 10 degrees C to minimize evaporation. So right now I can feel that the tray is pretty cold. Um, and then you can see here in the design that trade temperature was set to 10 degrees. Um, here we have the table of the data we just took, and you can see here the slope fit, the R squared is very excellent. So we have one perfect R squared for these uh, last four segments, and 0.9999 for this um, first segment after priming. So that's that's excellent. Even the segment for priming, which sometimes uh, shouldn't give the highest R squared, does have very good R squared value here. Um, so this, the R squared, we're, we wouldn't be surprised if the R squared for the priming segment is lower because that's, the priming segment is designed to be priming segment. It's not designed to be um, for your, like for the measurements you're going to be using. But you can, if you want, you can still use the data from the priming segment, it's up to you. Um, again, it's important not to assign more than one vial, more than one well location, sorry. Um, so do not, uh, it's recommended not to take your sample from the same well more than once. So if you want to load 19 microliters, and you want to measure 20 times, uh, you, you should uh, load from 20 different wells. You also have the option of recovering your sample. So that's the auto sampler. Uh, will come pick up the sample and put it back into the same well or a different well. And then you can use that for later uh, storage. And I think that's also what I mentioned toward the, during the slides. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the, those are the features for HTS mode. We can see the unit is undergoing cleaning now. So it's about halfway, almost halfway uh, during the cleaning steps. Uh, and then right after this, uh, so it should be about four more minutes and then it's going to start the next um, next set of uh, the next, uh, picking up from the next well that we specified from. So this roller, if uh, you are wondering, the roller that we used for getting the samples, this is from uh, BioRed. And the plate that we're using here is also from uh, uh, BioRed. So if you want the uh, the part number for that, we can supply that to you. So let's uh, let's see if uh, there are any questions here at this point. Perfectly. Okay. So let's put this over here. Okay, so one question is, when do I use the AO5 and BO5 chip? So the BO5 chip you can use for, that's the power, uh, uh, what's that word, power horse, powerhouse chip 
So it's uh, the most commonly used chip. It will measure samples as low as 0.4 uh, and as high as uh, 650 uh, centipoint. point. So if you're if you're running um, single pass, so you're not <clears throat> so meaning that uh, the sample is only going in one direction towards the waste. Uh, you can actually go up to 3,000 or higher uh, centipoids. Uh, so that would be uh, 3,000 centipoids with, so that would be over, uh, it would be up to 1,000 centipoids, sorry, with the BO5 chip. You can go up to 3,000 with the CO5. Now with the AO5, this is great for low viscosity samples as well, uh, particularly for organic solvents. Uh, in some cases, um, it may give, um, if you have like a tiny bubbles in your channel uh, with uh, like aqueous solutions, it may pick up those up and you won't get, you'll still get good data, but not as good as the BO5 chip. And the reason for that is because it's more sensitive than the BO5. So it's um, more sensitive to those micro bubbles. It's okay to have those micro bubbles in your channel. Uh, you can still get, uh, you're still going to get very good results but the AO5 is uh, a little bit more sensitive to those. Uh, so I would recommend BO5 for uh, most, if not all of your samples. AO5, you can uh, still use um, with your aqueous samples, but that's more recommended for organic uh, solvents. So, so the next question is, the instrument can only accommodate 500 milliliter bottles for A and B and only 250 bottle for C because the bases for those um, bottles sit can only fit these bottles. Any suggestions to be able to use one liter bottles for the high throughput screening? Uh, so yes, so we have the, this stand we can provide to you. So this stand goes over the, um, the weight sensors and that's going to accommodate the one liter bottles, which will sit perfectly into this, uh, on this stand. Another thing that we have in the software now is we, we don't have um, uh, readings for the pressure sensors. So we found that it's more uh, convenient um, and reliable to instead look at the the pressure uh, the level of solvent you have in the bottle before each run, which can be quickly be observed. Uh, this other question from the same user is: in the middle of these HTS, how does the instrument software take into account cases where solvent runs um, out in the middle of a run? So that's a good question. Uh, the system will take that into account in the beginning of the run so when you start um, running the your samples it's going to give you uh, the estimated volume you're going to need of each solvent and in that case you can view uh, how much solvent you have um, in your bottles to determine if that's enough for all of your samples so we can see now it's picking up the second sample that i specified at this uh, uh, other random location in the first two rows. So it's already starting with uh, characterizing the second one. So let's uh, let's see if we have any more questions at this point. Uh, I got a comment here, many thanks. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you for, uh, for attending the webinar. We're very excited with this uh, new feature. It's, uh, it's a very, high throughput and we can, there's no other, there's no other feature that uh, with, that we know of where you can measure your viscosity with such precision and you have, you're ensuring that, you know, your, your chips um, uh, are clean and it's uh, something we're very proud of. So the next question is, are 96 samples uh, in 24 hours in a single temperature? That's a good question. Uh, so in this case, we are measuring the samples in uh, one temperatures, one temperature. 
but uh, you can um, modify your protocol to measure at uh, multiple temperatures. And that can be easily done by going to protocols, measurements. So here I'm going to select the protocol we're using. We have a bunch of protocols here because we are constantly uh, making um, and testing uh, a multitude of them. So I'm going to look at the protocol we're using here. Uh, so that should be RS. Oh, this one here. This is the protocol. So we can see here that the protocol we're running now, we have this priming at this low rate, followed by auto mode. So what the unit is doing is it's selecting the rate for you. So if you have a high viscosity sample, it's going to run at a lower rate so that you don't uh, overpressure the chip. Uh, and if you have a low viscosity sample, it's going to go at a higher rate so that you get uh, good quality data. So it's running for this uh, five repeats after priming. And here you have the temperatures. So we're running only at 25 in this case. But if you are, if you want to run at multiple temperatures, you simply will go um, add two rows. You will add, just copy the information. So this information from the first two will be co copied to the second two. And then you set your new temperature. So let's say you want 30 degrees, you can set 30 degrees and that should be it. Then you can go ahead and click, um, click save and save the new protocol. So let's go, if we have another question, awesome. What is the approximate rate of change for the temperature? You change the temperature of both the samples and the chip. Okay, so I will start off with the um, second question. So uh, yes, that is correct. We change the, you can independently control the temperature of the samples. So this is set to one temperature that you want. And then we can control the temperature of the syringe and chip uh, as well. So at the moment we have 10 degrees C for the samples and we're measured, we have this at 25 degrees C. And then the other part of that question was, what is the approximate rate uh, of change for the temperature? So if you're going from, uh, let's say 37, 37 degrees C, uh, from 25 to 37, uh, you can expect that to take about four, four or five minutes. Now, if you're going from uh, to a very low temperature, like uh, 10 or four degrees for your, um, then you can expect that to be uh, uh, additional time, of course. So that's going to be uh, 10, 15 minutes um, for, for that. So I have to uh, I have to check exactly the exact amount of time. I haven't um, uh, checked the exact time. So I can get, uh, if you want, you can uh, send me your question uh, by email and I can get back to you with an exact, uh, exact time. So now we can see that it's in measurement four of the next, um, of the second sample. So it's already run through, through four segments of the second one. We can see here the loaded volume, that looks good, 13.6. And if you're recovering your sample, you can expect to get uh, about 80%, up to 80% of your sample back. Uh, when you recover your sample into into each of these wells here. And that's going to depend on the viscosity as well. So for higher viscosity samples, uh, that loading, that recovery percentage will be lower than 80%. I see how this data looks very good. Um, Yeah, so if, uh, let's see if there are other questions uh, at the moment. And if not, we can conclude the demonstration. Um, 
So looks like we don't have any questions at the moment. But yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. It's uh, very nice seeing uh, uh, all the uh, that we have uh, this many at, um, attendees interested uh, in this um, new feature. And I think this is going to improve a lot of uh, workflows and really, really be, uh, be a game changer. So thank you guys so much uh, uh, for taking your, the time out of your day. Uh, if you have any questions, you know where to reach us. Uh, if you want to uh, speak with me or contact me, uh, you can ask for um, Christian uh, and they'll know who I am. Um, perfect. Uh, thank you guys so much. This uh, will conclude uh, the webinar session. Thank you.